So all of these boxes that I'm carrying in right now, even though I'm getting ready to go to a tournament, these boxes actually aren't for the tournament. We're gonna talk about the tournament in this video, but I don't want you to think I'm misleading your creating clickbait. We really are gonna talk about the tournament, but there's t boxes and tackles scattered all over the shop. And actually none of that stuff is for my tournament. It's actually for, I guess this technically is for my tournament, but for not the tournament that I fish. So on March 23rd, I am hosting a online seminar and in-person fishing seminar. Goes with my school, straight up fishing. And all of this tackle, the rods and the wheels, reels, the rods and the wheels, the rods, the reels, the baits, the Z-Man stuff, power pole stuff, that's all stuff that I'm gonna be giving away at that event. So if you wanna get free tackle, if you wanna get free rods, reels, we're gonna be selling some rods too, selling some tackle, but a lot of the free gear, you gotta come to the in-person event that I'm hosting in Milledgeville, Georgia. I'm gonna leave a scan deal, what do you call it, a barcode thing where you hold your phone up, camera, and scan it somewhere in this area on the video when I edit it. Obviously, I have the SUF school online that you can take every single week of the month where we just teach you how to go fishing. Simple as that, how to catch more fish. But then I also throughout the year, I have in-person schools and this is one of them. At my in-person schools, we make it a party. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, we get down in the country, it's going to be a party. You're going to have tackle and everything. I'll show you some of the gear. This is a box full of favorite rods right here that I'm going to give away. Some of them I'll be selling too, but I have a handful of them to give away. Look at all these in the corner right here. Holy smokes. All right, so this right here, this is a trolling motor. I'm actually going to be giving it away. It's kind of heavy. This is a Motor Guide XI3. So I also host an online tournament series and these Motor Guide XI3s, that's what I give to all the guys that participate. Not all the guys that participate, but the winners in my tournament. So I've got three trolling motors to give away. I'm also doing a power pole giveaway at the event as well. Now I'm gonna leave all the instructions for you guys to come. I hope you come. I'd love to meet so many times. I see so many of y'all in the comment section, but I never actually got to meet you. So I'd love to meet you at the event. It's going to be, it's always a party. I do this every year. We host one event where uh, you know, I just give people a bunch of tackle. We talk about fishing, teach you how to catch more fish. My next tournament is at uh, West Point Lake in LaGrange, Florida. Never been there before. I've, uh, I've obviously done some research just to see what the lake looks like and what it's gonna be like, so forth. And honestly, it looks like it's gonna be a lot like home from what I can tell. Now I could be completely off base there, but I wanna show you, thought I may be cool to just kind of show you how I prepare for a tournament, like the things that I do. It's actually pretty simple. I've done some research. Research. I can't talk today for some reason. I, I've done some research just to see, uh, to see what the lake looks like. Even just knowing what the lake looks like, what kind of structure it has, and stuff like that. Very powerful tool. We use YouTube for that. I got some new stuff that I'm using. Some new uh, apps and things that I've been using. I'll show you a little bit later. I use Omnia Fishing. Omnia has like fishing reports. It shows you bottom hardness. It can show you the wind direction. It can show you water clarity. It can show you water temperature all on your phone, which is pretty cool. So I've been kind of tracking that the last few days to see like what the water level is and if the lake is rising in temperature and where the dirty water is coming. It's been raining like a lot. And uh, that allows me just to prepare better. I'm a visual guy, so I write like this. You got to probably laugh at my process. But I literally come in my, sh my shop, I got this whiteboard and I write down the things that I need or I think about the possible scenarios that may come, that I may come across when I'm fishing. Write them on this board, make sure all that stuff is in my boat. And that's pretty much it when it comes to preparing and remember what kind of tackle, rods, reels, lines, lures, soft baits, hard baits, crank baits, top water lures, you know, whatever the case may be. 
I literally write it down on this whiteboard. I put a check by it once it's in my boat. The baits and lures that I'm gonna need for staying and the baits and lures that I'm gonna need for clear water. You got the clear water side, you know, like where does some baits that out what I use for clear water? Definitely, you, like you can't even think about fishing now without your, your four facing sonar baits. So that's always gonna play. So I'll make sure I have streaks some type of Nico baits, some worms, probably my SMH worms. Shaky Head has to play, right? I heard it's got some spotted bass, so Shaky Head. I'll make sure I have that stuff. Rock crawlers, that's a good, for me, a rock crawler is a good, like, clear water crankbait. Uh, jerk baits. I don't know if there would be enough water, clear water for jerk bait it. West Point, but I'm, I'm gonna keep jerk bait. I'm trying to think what else, uh, jerk baits. I don't really fish jigs that much. Swim baits, make sure I got enough swim baits. That could be like, a, like a good swim bait would probably be something like a, uh, any of the finesse swim baits, three inch minnows, diesel minnows, or even the bigger swim baits, like a, a six inch or the mag draft style deal. I have a few mag drafts, I'll probably throw those in the boat. Um, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about top water. I do think there's a possibility that some fish could be spawning by the end of the tournament, depending on how the weather goes. But from what I can tell, just looking at the Omnia app, most of the lake is pretty freaking dirty right now. Imagine in the 50s, maybe 60 degrees. But I don't think there's gonna be a lot of fish spawning. Um, shake your head, Carolina rig stuff. That's definitely gonna play. Clear water, it's gonna be swim baits. You know, mag draft deals, streaks 375, Nico baits, shaky heads, rock crawler, crank bait, jerk bait, shad wrap, mid rig, Carolina rig stuff. A lot of times I found myself not having like swivels for that. Um, and then there's also like terminal gear. What do I need to freshen up it on terminal gear wise? So I'll put, make sure I got enough shaky heads, SMH heads, Swivels, um, tungsten sinkers, like just bullet sinkers, drop shot hook. How did I not put drop shot on here? Drop shot hooks. Once I put it in the boat, get it organized where it's supposed to be, I'll X out. I'll put an X by each one of these and uh, make sure I got it. What, baby? You want to help me? I got my baby girl Mia out here. She wants to help me today. So that helps too. This is a good way for me to kind of, I'm lucky that in the fact that I get to kind of work from home and sometimes I'm lucky. Sometimes it's hard to concentrate and pumpkin will help me. Mia will help me get ready to go. Ain't that right, Mia? <laughs> mm -hmm. I hope I win. I hope I win this time. You do I want to get in the boat with you? Of course. I'll get in the boat. You want to get in the boat, don't you? Are your feet clean? Okay. Be careful. I don't want you to get hurt. So my second thing is making sure I had the right rods. I'm pretty lucky in the fact that I really only use now favorite makes all different types of rods. Like they got, they got so many rods. I don't think I've ever used all the rods that Favorite makes. Of course, I've already been fishing in the boat. You can tell it's just kind of dirty. So I've got rods in here, but I always take out my rods and like almost do this inventory check to make sure that I have the rods that match the baits that I wrote on that list back there. So I'll pull them out, look at them, make sure I got enough of the rods that I'm going to use and make sure I got there are, there's nothing worse than getting to the lake and then finding out, oh, you need one more spinning rod or you need one more flipping rod, medium heavy or whatever the case may be. What, baby? I want to see. You want to see? I want to go. Huh? Maybe here, I'll give you one. You mean, give it here. I'll give you one. Give them here, baby. Daddy needs these. These are for my job. Okay. You want one? You have one, okay? 
I can't give you all of them. Because what are you going to do with it in here? You're not going to do much with it. Watch out. Watch out. Next is I'll take, uh, I'll look at that list that we made earlier and just make sure I got a rod for everything that's on that list. So I already got a finesse swim bait tied up. Looks like between finesse swim bait, shaky head, mid rig, if I got four spinning rods, that should get me this tournament. Keep in mind, I don't, I've never been here, so it's kind of, it takes a little extra preparation to make sure you got everything. So I got one, two, three. This is a spinning rod right here. Three. I would say four spinning rods is probably sufficient for this one. I'm pretty excited. I bought a new spinning rod, a new spinning reel. I went to uh, Tackle Show in Canada and I got a new Shimano reel. If you ask me, Shimano makes the best spinning reels there is, but it's back there in the back. I'm not getting back out of my boat. Looks like I also have a, uh, this is for my clear water stuff. Let me go rock crawler. So I need some of the, my cranking rods for crankbaits. So for crankbaits, I use my signature series rod. This is a favorite six stick. It's a graphite composite rod. Totally different. It just has a totally different attitude than a graphite rod. I like graphite composite rods and glass rods for cranking. In particular, even a chatterbait, I just, I like the way that feels. A lot of guys don't like it because graphite composite isn't as sensitive as a graphite rod, but I, I prefer that feedback that I get, that lack of feedback that I get from a graphite composite rod. It's just something about, if you're a real crankbait fisherman, you crank with a graphite composite. You don't use a graphite rod. It's, it's one of those things, it's very hard to articulate. I hear a lot of people say a lot of things about why they use graphite composite rods and I don't even know if I found any of that out to be true it's just like it just becomes to be a it just becomes to be a preference and then when you try to throw a crankbait on a regular rod after using a graphite composite like this you know you know it ain't the same so <clears throat> for medium diving crankbaits like that rock crawler uh, I have one for the shad wrap too for the rock crawler and chatterbait is this one you say I actually have a chatterbait tied onto this crankbait I use this seven foot two medium heavy signature series. It's good for that. It's, it's, it's got enough backbone to throw those bigger crankbaits, but still soft enough to get that feedback that you want from a, from a cranking rod. This is my shad wrap rod. This is, actually no, that's not it. Where's the shad wrap rod? I've got one, I'll call it my shad wrap rod. Right here. I've actually got a fritz side tied on, on to it right now. I may actually leave that on there. Looks like I'm gonna need about five cranking sticks or four. I would at least do two of my seven twos, two of the six, uh, the six ten mediums. So this is a six ten medium, shorter rod, a lot more play in the tip, slower, in slower action. Yes, yeah, slower action. It just whips a really light balsa plug like a shad wrap really will. If you try to throw a shad wrap on a stiff rod, it just doesn't work that good. Same thing with a fritz size or any kind of small crankbait. It could be a fritz size, that could be a square bill. Any of your 1.5 type crankbaits, I like this smaller setup personally, but it's I'll need at least two of those, two of those guys. In my setup for uh, for West Point, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna be cranking. Let's just be clear, I am going to be cranking if I don't do anything else. Looks like I also have share wrap rock crawler, this and this, and this one baits. Okay, let's jump over to the stain side. No, Carolina rig. So Carolina rig, bobblehead, swing head type stuff. This is probably my, my favorite all-purpose rod in the favorite lineup right here. Favorite absolute. This one's a seven foot two heavy. But it's a different seven foot too heavy than my cranking. This is a graphite rod. It's pretty, it's got, I mean, you can bring it to the house with this one. So I use that for Carolina rigging, swim jigs, stuff like that. All right, let's see what else we got over there. Stain water, spinner baits, chatter baits, crank baits. Okay, this one right here. Oldie, goldie, for moldy. They don't even make, Favorite doesn't even make this rod anymore. This is a favorite defender. I think this is when Turkla was with the company. He designed this rod. Listen, 
the, don't let the don't let the flashy color on this rod fool you. Somebody probably gonna get mad about that. What do you mean? There's white, red, white, blue. That's a cut nations. I mean, I like the nation's colors too, but I don't know if I necessarily just want to run around with my rods the nation's colors. You know, do whatever you want to with that. But this rod right here is bar now my favorite spinnerbait rod ever. Like, I've been trying to talk them into let me bring this favorite Defender seven foot medium heavy into my six stick lineup and brand it as my spinnerbait rod. I don't know if they'll let me do it or not, but they don't make this one anymore. This, um, only thing I'll do is just change the colors and bring it to the six stick with the same thing. Maybe add one guide to it. There's a few little nuances here and there. Just very small thing, but the blank itself is a bad dude, bro. My favorite spinnerbait rod, seven foot medium heavy. I won't be throwing spinnerbait. You know what I'm saying? I won't be throwing spinnerbait. Three of them, because sometimes I'll throw like a Colorado, sometimes I'll throw a Will Leaf. Matter of fact, I've already been doing it. I got to retie that with a new, a new Colorado blade. But sometimes I use these and um, I'll use a half ounce Colorado. I'll use a half ounce Willow. And then I'll also use a uh, half ounce Colorado, half ounce Willow. And then I'll also use a three quarter ounce, either Colorado or Willow. Just if I need to get on that six, seven, eight foot, I'll use the, the three quarter. I haven't really gotten to using an ounce yet, but I love throwing a spinnerbait. There's no way you're going to have a spinnerbait in 50 degree water and march anywhere in the southeast and a spinnerbait not catch fish. So there's that. Um, what else? Oh, a jerkbait. I need a jerkbait rod. So I got jerkbaits, crankbaits, lifters. So my jerkbait, this is the Pro Series 6 foot 8. Pro Series 6 foot 8. I use, use a fast reel for my jerkbait just so you can keep up but with the line a little bit better so uh i probably need two of those so i need to grab one more i would at least have two of those a flipping stick <clears throat> i mean stain water flipping stick that just kind of go together for me flipping stick is gonna i need at least two of these so i'm gonna have to get a few more rods I, a gremlin like you see i already got tied on there light sinker is the mdj hex now this is the epitome of a, of a flipping rod. And it's also got the epitome of a price at $400. Hey, but when, this is the, when you, when you pay $5,000, it's your fees with tournaments, that's your excuse to buy good equipment. I, did, I, never, I never had good rods and reels until I started fishing for a living. And by God, I'm gonna tell you, there's a difference. There really is a difference. On rods, for the most part, once you get to $200 on rods, I'd like to stay in it. Most of these rods actually are cheap, except for my flipping stick. What I found out is that when I, when I started getting into those high modulus, expensive rods, I was just breaking them a bunch. I'd go to rear back on them and I'd just, just bust them. So I stopped using quite as expensive rod for certain techniques, like my spinning rod is, what is it, 199 maybe, or 150, 119. Or 129, I don't know, just take the, I don't know, 129 I think is what it is. Cheap rod, not very affordable. This one, spinnerbait rod's like 99 bucks. My, uh, the Pro Series is 150 bucks. 129 for my cranking sticks. Nothing over here is stupid expensive except for this one. This one's a bad dude. I use that to flip with. The crazy thing is I can take the same rod and flip 15 pound test fluorocarbon, and then I can just put the same rod, put 50 pound test braid, and flip one up out of a mat with this one, MDJ Hex. It's a pretty good one. So, those are definitely rods I'm gonna take to, uh, to West Point. I just need to figure out, I just need a couple more, so I'll dig those out. I feel like y'all would probably benefit from seeing a little bit deeper into how I, um, like, I, I, I really wanna go a little deeper into how, like, how I, uh oh, sorry. A little deeper into how I, good grief, I'm zoomed all the way in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive a little deeper into how I actually prepare for the, the water. What is, what is it gonna look like? How I find stuff? How do I know that a creek, a boulder, a lay down, uh, a row of docks is in a certain place? I actually use my computer. I use two tools for that on my computer. So 
Um, I'm gonna finish up in the shop tonight with this stuff. I won't bore you with the rest of it. But in the morning, I'll get up and I'll show you exactly how I, I look for things. There's a couple tools that I use to find things on the water before I get there so I can save time. Saving time is the name of the game. We talking about fishing. If you're not saving time, you're losing time. If you're losing time, you're probably gonna make it more stressful on yourself. And if you're stressful on yourself, you're probably not gonna fish good. And if you, can't, if you don't fish good, if you don't fish good, then probably, I mean, like, what's the point of anything you're doing if you're not fishing good? That's literally the point in the whole thing. And maybe you can use this in your tournament practice. It starts inside. I'm in my office now. Everything that I do to prepare for a tournament, believe it or not, I, it has, I won't touch a rod, reel, or boat, or lure, or hook, or line for a very long time. It starts right here in my office on the computer. There's two specific tools that I use a lot. One of them is Google Earth. I have, I have two computers here. The reason I have two computers is I, obviously for research and fishing, and the other thing is editing videos. I edit all the YouTube videos that you guys watch. That way I just have twice the memory to do everything I need. But I'm gonna show you how I use Google Earth, and I use YouTube. Now, I use both of these tools, and I use some additional tools, but these are the two main things that I use mostly. I use, you know, I still use some old school stuff, good old whiteboard. I'll show you how I use that here in a little bit. But we start here. Start here to get a plan together. Then secondly, we get our, our baits, our lures, our boats, maintenance, all that stuff goes next. So we'll move into that after we figure out what the heck we are doing first. All right, so let's get this started. Hang around for the video. I'll show you how we get the shop and the boat and the tackle and everything ready. And then after I do that, we're actually gonna go to the lake and involve the, the practice from all of this. We'll get the result from all of this stuff, that, the information we're about to gather here, okay? So the first thing I'd like to do is, and I do like paper maps, believe it or not. I use paper maps quite a bit. Let me turn the camera where you maybe can actually see this a little better. We'll go to Google Earth. We'll go to the Google Earth app. You can use your phone. You can use the Omnia app. It has aerial mapping on there. And then I'm just gonna type in the name of the lake. All right, and it's gonna look at this West Point Lake. I just typed in West Point. Let's type in West Point Lake. It's gonna take me to the wrong place. All right, West Point Lake. This is in like South Georgia, kind of actually borders even Alabama. You can see it. it it's right on the Georgia line, Georgia, Alabama line. Is that the song? Is it Georgia, Florida, Georgia line? It's Florida, Georgia line, not Alabama, Georgia line. You can see this is a pretty big lake. I'm gonna zoom in. It's, a, it's a, not a big lake acreage wise, but the lake is big. It's big in the fact that it has a lot of shoreline, a lot of pockets. You can see there's not that many creeks on it. There's a creek down here at the dam. Um, there's a creek right here. This is Creek Recreational. Um, and I'm sure just like just by any other lake, you can wind your way up here. Let's see, is this the river? I guess this, yeah, this would be the river, I think. No, that's Yellow, Yellow Jacket Creek. So I guess that's not the river. The river must be this way. Never been to it, so that's, this is exactly why I'm here. Oh, okay, here goes the river right here. Go up this way. All right, so. Oh, actually, no, that's not the river. Oh, okay, I see how it goes. It goes this way. The good thing about Google Earth is you can go back on, you can look at different dates. You can see the, what the lake looks like at different water levels. You can see, you can see how I, all of this looks a different color water than this down here. That lets you know that this is where the most flow is coming. So where you see the most discoloration, most likely, that means there's a lot of flow. There's a reason that that water looks like milk. And then when you come out of here, and look in some of these other creeks, like let's look in this creek over here, you can see it's not quite as muddy. The reason for that, it doesn't have as much flow. Those are important things to know. 
let's go up the river right here you can see where sandbars are and during certain times of the year i'll use this to find like um i'll use it to find stumps depressions brush piles rock piles you know probably should be using it in this one but the water level is much different than it is in this video or in this uh in this screenshot right now i think the lake is about five foot low this looks like it's way lower than five foot here but even when you look at this imagery from when it's really low you can see where all the high spots and sand spots are little depressions you can see how inconsistent the riprap is um there's a, a lot of things that i use to find and then what i do a lot of times is i take you can actually put waypoints in like you see this right here whatever that is i can actually put a waypoint on that uh i can put i can i can get the uh, put a mark on it let's see I can move that mark around and then i can copy and paste or i can just put rock pile i don't know what that is i can put rock pile on that copy and paste that coordinate let's pull it back up copy and paste that coordinate put it in my graph and go right to that rock pile without having to spend four hours idling if the lake if you can get imagery low enough you can find crappy brush piles in the backs of these pockets let's let's zoom out here you know i may be able to find some of that that's what i like to look so when i get to the lake i got an idea of where things are that's what that's basically what i'm trying to do um I, you know bridge corners in this tournament i would like to think i noticed right off the bat this place has a lot of bridges so i would use i would probably just have i don't think i need to put waypoints in my graph where the bridges are just knowing like hey when i go up the river that creek on the right side has a bridge in the back of it before i even get up there that saves me a lot of time uh, second thing I can do so that's how I use this tool Google Earth I can see up here up the river there is uh, there's one two there's three good creeks up the river before it just turns to a straight up straight river I'm gonna call the river anything past this bridge right here let's see what highway this is in my mind once you get above this bridge right here it doesn't say Moody Bridge West Probably if you get above that bridge right there, that is probably what I would consider the river. Getting a good layout of the land and where the most flow is. Because with it being a springtime tournament like this, it's most likely it's probably going to be some rain. At some point in the week, there's going to be a rain and there's going to be a cold front. Guaranteed, I've never fished one a tournament between February and April where you don't get rain and or a cold front always happens so knowing what may or may not blow out first is important knowing what creeks may already be muddy or going to clear the fastest the ones that get the most flow muddy up the fastest they also clear up the fastest because they have the most flow when it rains you do get a lot of water but then since it stops raining the clear water pushing in is going to clear up the quickest so finding the creeks that have the most dirty water it means two things they're going to clear up the fastest and they're going to get muddy the muddiest the fastest now this is why i have two monitors to be able to do these two things one a very very important tool looking at this map is one thing right looking at the map is cool you're like oh i see the bridges i see the riprap i see the things but watching people fish where you're going is perhaps the most valuable tool that I have found. I, that's probably why a lot of people watch my videos. If you're coming to Lake Hartwell, you're probably going to look at videos of me or somebody else that fishes Lake Hartwell because you want to see it. What are they doing? What does it look like? What does the mud look like? What does the water look like? Uh, like what what are they seeing? And so I do use YouTube. I do use YouTube to see. Let me turn this down so you can actually see what I'm looking at here to see like what the lake actually looks like. The map versus what you see in the videos looks completely different. So let's look at this one. This is uh, Southern Boundaries. He's fishing so you, uh, West Point you, Lake. He's throwing the bait. He's I've already been, I've actually already been watching this video. Southern Boundaries. Right here. 
says he's fishing a DT10. Yeah. You know, I might make a note of that. I keep like little notepads and stuff at my at my desk. So if somebody says something that maybe I don't have, or maybe I do have it, I just need to make a mental note to uh, to bring whatever they're talking about. I write it down on my sticky pad, bring all that out to the shop, load it into the boat. Here's two guys right here. What is this, this bass? Uh, the bass hunter. The bass hunter. I wonder if you, you're gonna watch this video, give, give the bass hunter subscribe. This says, the title of this video is West Point Tournament Fishing First Place Finish. I see a spinning rod, so he already got my love right off the bat. Looks like this guy's just fishing a red clay point with uh, with a with a wacky rig. Yeah, red clay point with a wacky rig. Him and his partner are locked up. But I can see the watercolor. I can see the bank. I can see what they're trying to fish. Dang, that's a good one. That's a good fish. He said, this is what we call fishing. See, I told you I'm gonna throw wide throw. <laughs> yeah, throwing trick worms and stuff like that on points. Yeah, so that looking at videos like this gives me a good visual. I see what people are fishing. I see what size fish are in the lake, so I know whether I'm on par or not. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, you kind of want to know what it takes to win local tournaments there. I don't know why we always do that almost like you're gonna go catch your little fish first but I don't know I just like there's some comfort in knowing where I stack up against local traffic and you'll find a lot of good local videos almost every lake that you fish there's a, cl a bass club so you get a lot of local information just from watching watching YouTube there's usually a, a local trail there there's clubs there so you'll see what the lake is ha what has in it and what I've noticed a lot of people say, oh, when the pros come, they catch X, Y, and Z. What I have found is that fishermen catch what's in the lake. So if you look at BFL results, and it takes nine pounds to get a check in your tournament, you can bet your bottom dollar is going to take somewhere between nine and 10 pounds to get a check because that's what's in the lake. It doesn't matter of what you think the quality of fishermen is. Fishermen catch what's in the lake. And so... I've found that to be a very reliable source for finding uh, tournament data is looking at tournament results from local club tournaments, BFLs, and um, team tournaments in that area. Whatever those weights are is typically, typically what the lake has in it. I'm definitely a little bit late to the ramp today. I won't say that's on purpose, but there is a purpose for it. I, uh, man, when I woke up this morning, I should have been, maybe should have been, should have been here two hours ago. When I woke up this morning, I couldn't think of what I really wanted to accomplish when I was out here on the lake. Like, what are you gonna do? And so, it's real easy in these tournaments to come out here and you just practice because you got three days of practice and you just come out here on the water and you really don't have any intention <laughs> you don't have any purpose when you're out here on the water you're just out here just fishing just floating around and what i found out about myself personally is that what happens is i can't think straight when i'm out here on the water you see boats buzzing around <clears throat> there's there's an added pressure to being on the water that clouds your vision and you can't think right and you don't see things the setting right in front of you and so this year what I promised myself I would do was, was slow down literally don't go fishing unless you have a purpose unless you have a specific area of the lake that you want to fish for a specific reason you sit down and you have a plan because so many times, that's why we always have so much hindsight in tournaments. It's because we're just going, 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 going. I, I should say I. That's why I have so much hindsight in tournaments. Because you just go, 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 go. And then after the tournament, you have the nerve to want to try to think. When you should have just been thinking from the beginning. Like start thinking because it just doesn't take that much. It doesn't take that much to make a day of tournament fishing. So if you start off thinking, like I wanted, to, I wanted to start off my day today. Start out the day with hindsight.
This water looks muddy. Sometimes, sometimes it looks a lot muddier than it really is. Like it could be right on top. Like that dirty water can be right on top. If that makes sense. Like it looks dirty and then you get on it. Like I guess it's fresh rain or something. But you, it looks a lot muddier than it really is. This lake probably takes a long time to clear up. There's no grass in it. It's all mushy, red clay, sandy bottom. So all that nastiness just gets washed into the water. It probably takes forever for it to clean up. This is a really steep bank, probably the steepest bank in the whole creek. I think that might be some of the key to catching a few fish today. It's fishing these steeper banks like this. Doesn't look steep where, where I'm fishing right now, but right over here where I'm going, it is completely different. That's what I'm looking for. You see how you look, you look up the bank, you could almost, like if you had to walk up that, you would, you need a pair of hiking boots. You couldn't do it in your sneakers. That's kind of what I've been focusing on was on banks that look like that. Every bite I've got has been where there's pretty drastic depth change. Maybe that's because the lake is low. I, I really don't know. There ain't, there's not a lot for these fish to be on in this lake. It's just, just not. Big laydowns like this, I don't really catch much on these. I don't know why. It's like a little laydown, but just some of it's in the water. Those tend to the ones I tend to do better with. Like this one, I've never, I ain't gonna say I ain't never caught one on a laydown like this, but pretty unlikely. Dude, it's getting, it's getting an eerie feeling like it's about to rain. I don't know how to explain that. It got really warm. The wind's blowing. It just feels real rainy. Can't explain that. It definitely feels real rainy. I think I did just explain it actually. Get your butt off. Get your butt off. Get your butt. Get off. There we go. Thing about a spinnerbait is it spinnerbait is fairly it comes through wood good but the problem is you have to like if it if it turns over it hangs up a bunch like you, you gotta have that you, you gotta make it track true if it turns sideways if it turns over it hangs up that's why it's really it's actually really important when you're uh, when you throwing a spinnerbait at wood like this to keep winding. So like it's a piece of wood right there. Like just keep winding. Don't pull it real fast because you pull it real fast. It just turns over and it snags. Of course, it's not going to come through every time, but, you know, most of the time. But to lessen your chances of snagging, you just maintain a steady retrieve. Don't jerk it, don't pull it, don't reel faster, don't no sudden reactions, because what that does is make the make the blade make it turn over sideways, it turns over sideways, it snags. It's like I just threw over a limb, but just pull. I just keep a steady, even though it's coming over that limb, just a steady, steady retrieve. Nothing fast, nothing too slow. Steady retrieve. That's all you want to do. Steady retrieve. Keep it from snagging over that. Turning over and snagging. See, like these laydowns like this, I don't, I don't know if they're supposed to be for crappy. Which they just fell over. They didn't. It's not like somebody cut them down. They do that a lot at home. People go in the creek and just start cutting down limbs. 
I'm pretty sure it's illegal if people do it. I mean, smoking marijuana is illegal and people still do it. I guess cutting trees down so we have fish habitats, the least of the, should be the least of our worries. And somebody's gonna be extremely upset about that comment. It was a joke, guys. You don't have to cover your kids' ears. Put some music on and play it slow. Baby, I ain't got no place to go. Something about the radio. I hope you understand. My favorite country song. I don't know the name of it. I don't know the name of who sings it. I don't even know if you call that singing. It's like, that's like, it's like begging or something. Put some music on and play it slow. Boo boo do boo do boo I hope you understand. What's y'all's favorite country song? I listen to, I like a few country songs. I ain't the biggest country artist, lover, but some of them are good. If it's good country, I like it. That's, that's what all music. Like, I'll listen to some hip hop. If it's good, that, hip, that mumbo jumbo hip hop, I don't wanna hear it. I don't like that. I like just good music. Oh, don't be hanging up. I feel like it's some fish right here somewhere. I don't want to hang up right there. I like good music, man. Any kind of music. Come and let me know that. Let's have some fun with that. What's y'all's favorite music? What's y'all's favorite kind of music? You don't want to. You don't want to ask me what my favorite music is. I listen. Listen. I'll mess you up if you're trying to put me in a box. Well, I bet. I bet Brian listens to this kind of music. Boy, I would disappoint. I will break your heart with the kind of music I like to listen to. It, I, you can't you can't even put me in a box. They ain't got a box for this, the kind of music I like. I listen to all types of music. man that is a freaking giant look at this thing look at that thing huh holy smokes would you look at that oh my god big old pre-spawn female jeez I uh, feel pretty good about that. <laughs> Whew. That one ain't small at all, is it? Man. Guess I'll throw that one back. Yeah, you're gonna need those. Sorry, I didn't know that. That clean? I got booger in my nose. I do think this is going to be some pretty simple, straightforward fishing here. I don't think you need to. I don't think you have to overthink. Uh, I wouldn't overthink. Get you somewhere you like to fish, sit down, and, and go for it. I like that kind of fishing. Makes sense. What I do like is where I caught that fish, it makes sense to fish there, too. You know what I mean? Like. I got that bite. That wasn't anywhere. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I got a bite right there. That's weird. I never caught one doing that before that way. All it does, it builds your confidence. Builds your confidence big time when something like that happens. Because sometimes when you get a bite, sometimes if you get a bite doing something that, uh, you're not 
expecting it also it almost kind of confuses you a little bit when you get a bite doing something that you already know how to do and you're expecting it to happen it just really it really just reinforces the knowledge that you've already you know gathered so we just kind of continue to build off of that through the week i hope that's that's the plan anyway just continuing to build off what we're seeing so there is some big fish in here that's why i just tied on in case you couldn't see it good this is the new chatterbait evo god the sun just come out all of a sudden chatterbait evo white and chartreuse i'm sure they got a fancy name for it but i like that kind of trailer and i'll throw that some of the places like just going down the bank where there's nothing at there's a lot of structure in the bank there's like a lot of rock transitions and wood but um we'll fish it all fish whatever comes down the bank Exactly what you think they are. Goodness gracious. Dude, that's a big one too. First cast on the chatterbait. Oh, he's got it file hooked or something. Dude, I got him hooked in the butt. Look at that. That's a good fish too. Holy smokes. How did that happen? That has never happened. I got him hooked in the anus. Dude, I hooked that fish in the anus. I hope I can say anus. Look, look. First cast on the chatterbait. I have never, I don't think I've ever, that's the, I, I caught him right in the woo-ha. I threw it out there. I was like, dude, there's no way that's a bite. I'm sorry, Mr. Bass. I think I've rolled it across his back or something. That had to be what happened. Literally the first cast on that chatterbait. I just sat down and tied it on. Literally sat down and tied it on and threw it out there. I was like, oh, that ain't that ain't. I've had that happen. I've had that happen with like carp and stuff before. Never on a chatterbait. There's obviously some fish back here in this creek, so I'll just kind of ride around and see see what's out here to be had. Because that's three bites, three really good bites in this one area. I hadn't really actually I'll take that back. I was about to say I hadn't got three bites in any one area, but I get bites in an area and then I go the rest of the day and I don't get any more bites. So, on the chatterbait. Okay. I think I do see a pattern here. This lake is really flat, right? It's it's a it's a it's fairly flat. It doesn't have like doesn't have a bunch of contour on it. And so what I'm noticing is these ditches that have contour on them like this one this one has like this ditch where we're fishing right now has a lot of contour if it's a ditch with contour on it it's probably fish there like you go back in there you can you see this one i'm gonna fish this one right here in front of me it's a little flatter but i think i think that's the secret to it is fishing those places like that some of the creeks you can just look at the topography of the land like when you look at it you go back in the creeks and some of them just have very gently sloping banks but this particular one if you just look up on the bank behind me like the trees like it's it's like a hill like if you had to walk up the hill you'd have to if you try to get off the bank you'd have to walk up a steep hill but like right here you could just get off the bank and just walk up you know you could just walk up through there it's not that steep right here so I think you, I think you just gotta kind of pay attention to where you're fishing at. I think it could be a, this could be a good tournament for me. I think I got a few things figured out. It's gonna set up the way I like to fish and nothing else.
right now I'm fishing up north. I think that northwest section, this feels like I like to start there and then just kind of work my way, work my way down south and just kind of start from there. You don't know what the water clarity is going to look like. You don't know if it's going to be too muddy, too clean. Sometimes the further you go up a river, actually, believe it or not, the cleaner it gets. But oftentimes the only way for you to figure that out is to go see it. So West Point, I have not been here before. Okay, so I, I spent a lot of time this morning just riding, just looking. About actually I spent I got in the water about 745 until I rode around until it's after nine. So about two hours I just rode. Which seems like a lot, but after you cut in all the little pockets and cuts that they got on this lake, it, it's a lot like home. There's a lot of pockets and a lot of cuts and a lot of little ins and outs here. Two and I, two hours, I, I you know, I covered a good amount of, amount of ground, but honestly, not that much. <laughs> not that much. Probably less than an eighth of the lake I covered. It's not that big of a lake. I think it's 26,000 acres. I can't remember what we said it was acreage wise, but not, not extremely big, but um, has a lot of shoreline. What? Wow. That's the ugliest spot. That is not a South Carolina spotted bass, that's for sure. Spots usually look a lot prettier than that, especially this time of year. Dude, I'm actually surprised that the bite is not better than it than it is. 61 degree water temperature. In March? Well, it's late February. Same thing. Bro, let's give me some of that anywhere in the world. You take me to Australia in March, I feel like I could catch one. Well, maybe not Australia. Late winter, early spring, 60 degree water. Sign me up. I don't know what's... I, the thing I do like about it, I do think it's going to be easy to do good in this tournament because, because of this, because it's so... Uh, like it's not that good. You figure out a little something, figure out how to catch you 10 pounds or so, it's probably gonna be pretty good for you. Cause it doesn't seem like the fishing, it really doesn't seem like it's that good. Even though all the water is real stained this week, I wouldn't be surprised if you could still, if you could still use that technology to catch you some fish. Matter of fact, I, I know you can this lake is is known for crappy fishing so there should be like a lot of crappy brush piles in these pockets and stuff and there's just no way you can tell me that some of these bigger fish are not going to be setting up on on the uh, crappy brush piles rip wrap corners you know, ditches in the middle of ditches and stuff like that just chasing bait even with the water stain like you should still be able to catch them in like eight foot feedback now we're getting some data oh whoa all right all right he looks like getting the data be back in the water good data now we're getting some data okay now we're getting a little bit of data you can't do nothing without data and bass fishing data is bites so to be fair, this is my second day of practice here at uh, West Point. And first day, I got a couple bites here and there. Not really that good. So, you know, it's just kind of hard to know which way to point your barrel. If you don't know which way to shoot. You know, if you don't know where the target is, 
you don't know which way to shoot you got to get bites then you can kind of start you know focusing in your scope on where you need to go and what things need to look like and get your mind wrapped around what you're going to be doing but i really feel like in this tournament i'm already getting this vibe i'm feeling like in this tournament it'd be one where you don't really like don't count on practice too much you ain't gonna get a whole lot out of your practice you might get a few bites here and there but really and truly you're gonna have to just rely on some good old-fashioned common sense in this wow that was a bite there that's what I, that's just the feeling that i'm getting from this i just don't think there's gonna be a lot of fish biting just yet what happens i've seen this a bunch when it warms up so water's 58 ish and it's hot every day it's 58 um 60 close to 60 61 in areas what happens is those deep schools they bust up gets warm you think the fish are biting real good and really they ain't quite biting good yet you know they they're trying to get there but every, you just got to remember everything's delayed underwater if the water was clear i'm not even sure what the water clarity was but if it was clear the water was clear let's just say three weeks ago a month ago man it just got muddy a lot of fish are probably still out in the middle of the lake deep on brush or just on nothing just eating bait and so it warms up right those fish are in 20 20 25 30 foot of water wherever they are not on the bank well if it warms up and it's 60 degrees where i'm at now those fish that are down deep they don't even they don't even know they don't know what's going on it's just like you being on the in the house you ever been in your house walk outside and realize holy crap it's cold front coming like it's cold i didn't know it was supposed to be that cold that that kind of thing well the same thing happens with these bass a lot of times you know they didn't they didn't when they're in 20 foot 30 foot it's just like them being in their house they don't even know that it that it that it warmed up yet it takes a lot longer for them to realize like oh snap spring is here of course there's a lot of other factors like day length and all these other things that that go into this but you know water temperature and warming is definitely a big part of it it's a part of the formula it's not everything but water temperature warming up is a big part of getting these fish to move day length plays too but when they're out deep like that man they don't they don't even realize it and so then when they do realize it that bust the schools up deep there's always this like funky period between when it first warms up the funky period where ain't nothing really biting that good it's almost like how it is in the fall it's a tricky it's honestly a tricky time of the year in our area because our fish can be pretty heavily migratory you can go from like in march april you can catch them around the banks and then listen once they leave the banks in may or june a lot of times them bad boys never come back the rest of the year <clears throat> like you probably never catch fish on this rip wrap that i'm fishing right now until 2025 done they ain't, they ain't there no more they go back to chasing bait the only time you can catch them doing stuff like this is a lot of times in the winter winter and spring but in between there's just this little little period where they not on the banks yet and then they're not out deep yet and they're not on points yet they're just somewhere <clears throat> somewhere doing something where you can't really catch them I feel like that might be about where we are right now this week, but it could change real fast. Well, I tell you, I mean, I, I know a lot of times we say, well, it doesn't happen overnight. Man, listen, them fish got tails and they, they it literally does actually kind of happen overnight. I mean, I, I know that seems like an exaggeration, but I know because I've seen it. It's like they're not there. They're not there. And then literally all of them are all of a sudden there it is overnight most of the time especially especially just given on the weather every year is different you know, we have one of those cold years 
Yeah, it can be a lot different where when it's cold, you have a couple peter up and spawn and a couple come and then a couple more come and then a couple more come. It, when the weather's fairly stable, fairly predictable, man, it happens overnight. It, it really does happen overnight. That's, there's no exaggeration with that. So I wouldn't be surprised if the fishing gets better. We know this. It's not going to get worse this week. I don't know. Maybe with the pressure. You never know what pressure of, pressure of a lake. Could be a fun week. I think it could be fun. I mean, the weird thing is I'm down here. Now I'm down here at the dam. And you would think I would be catching spots. Even though I'm fishing the riprap, the water's muddy, so the fish are going to, you know, they're going to hang kind of shallow. I'm not catching. That's not what I'm catching. I'm catching, catching spotted bass still. We got rain. Rain's coming. That, that could be weird. I don't know if that, what that does to the water. It's already pretty muddy. Like from dam to dam, we pretty much got mud in this tournament. I don't know if we get if we get any more rainfall that could get really interesting to see what that does to the water. It'll blow out what little areas that we do have the fish. Go ahead and blow them all the way out of the water. There is some fish to be caught, y'all. I can agree to that. I, I don't think it's easy. It doesn't feel like a good old pre-spawn March tournament to me just yet. But there's some fish to be caught. Like there, there's a I, I, there's a way. There's a way to get what you need out of this. Sometimes you're out here fishing and do you literally feel like, man, there's just no way. I, I don't know how, I, there ain't no way. But there's a way. I, I could see how a few things go right and uh, there are a few things go right and, and you could have a really good bag of fish. For me in this tournament, you know, you know, a limit, a limit will probably will, will go a long way. A limit and then a good limit. I also feel like this tournament you'll be able to come back. So let's let's just play hypotheticals. I I go out first day and don't really do that much. Come in with three fish for seven pounds. No big deal. You come in the next day and you catch 12, 13. Bro, you probably jump up to top 30 fit easily uh, with 20 pounds or so. So I think you do need to be patient with yourself. Know what's realistic to expect. Don't let your ego get in the way of what happens in this tournament because uh, if you play your cards right, you can come back even after you know fumbling a little bit. And I think you'll see that. If they go one way or the other, you can come out, you can come out stroking on day one, 17, 18 pounds, and then come back day two and maybe only catch. As Bill Taylor would say, a couple of three pounds. Wouldn't surprise me not one bit. Okay, y'all, so yesterday it rained. I had to put up all my camera gear. It rained so hard. Matter of fact, let me tell you what happened. This was, I didn't tell y'all about this. It came up, I, I could, it was one of those rains where you see it coming from the distance. I could see it coming from the bridge. So I was like, oh crap, let me get my rain suit. Let me get my rain suit. So I started digging around and get my rain suit on and it starts pouring pouring on me with, with no rain suit on, right? Dig around, finally get that out. So I put my rod down and I had a cast out and it turned the boat around even though I was power pulled down. My rod gets pulled into the water because after I get my suit on and get wet and put all my camera gear up and put stuff up, then I go to look for my rod. I ain't got no, there ain't no rod on the deck. And there's 20 other ones, but not that one that I was using. And so I fumble around for 20 minutes trying to find this rod. I took my, where's my, my thing at? My, uh, my plug knocker. I got this plug knocker thing, right? I got this thing right here that I use to, to get plugs loose with. You should definitely buy you one. It gets like 15 foot deep. It, it extends out. This is totally beside the point. And look, this is a good product. I don't, I don't get any, I don't get not a single dime to, to promote this product. But it's kind of hard to, especially when it's wet, it kind of creates this vacuum and you can't get the thing to, can't get it to act right, but it literally extends 15. Here, I'll, I'll turn it around. Turn it around this way. 
Yeah, dude, it's, it's cheap too. I don't remember how much it is, but I've saved a bunch of plugs with it. You, you'll find it's, it's cheap. It can be like, it can be a little cumbersome to use, especially when you have to extend it out a long ways. Cause it's, I mean, it legitimately goes out 15 feet. <sighs> Look at this. Look at that. 15 foot, dude. So like you can get your plug it's literally the, the length of your boat almost. You literally, it's literally the length of your boat. Anyway, so I use this, I'm plugging around in the bottom of the lake trying to, trying to like dredge up my rod. I know if I catch the line, I get my rod back. Cause we're talking about like a four or $500 combo. Like this was a lose pro TI with one of my, is one of my cranking sticks. That's $150. That's what lose pro TI I think it's like $400 plus my rod. That's another, I don't know, two, $150. So I'm like, I gotta get this rod. I ain't kissing that many fish. We gonna at least get my rod back. Dude, I did it for 20 minutes. Do not get my rod. And so I finally just picked up a crankbait. I picked up this one right here. I picked up, because it was in shallow water. It was like four foot of water. I picked up this crankbait and dredged it up like the first cast. Caught the line, pulled the rod in. That was the most accomplished catch that I've had probably in the last four years. That was a $400 catch. If you think about it, it's a $400 catch. Did you throw your rod in the water? No, you didn't listen to the whole story. I wasn't listening. Oh my God. <laughs> Just tell the whole story, he wasn't listening. <laughs> the whole story. It's a good story. It was a really good story. I got all these rods in here and I always end up using like two in the tournament every single time. What would y'all, let's, hey, let's rate the lake. What would you, what would y'all rate the lake right now? A one. A one, a one out of 10? <laughs> hey, wait a minute, let's do that. that. That'll be a good, we're about to do a rate this lake. <laughs> Mark, hey Mark, my boy Mark has rate this bait. Right now we're gonna do rate the lake. So y'all haven't met my buddy Joe. So I just met Joe at this tournament. Uh, so Joe fishes, you fish the Toyotas with Christian and Flint. Yep. And so he decided to jump in this event here in Georgia since we're, we're right here. You're from Georgia, right? Yes sir. So cool, you said this is your first, I don't know what we call it anymore, First five thousand dollar event, if nothing yeah. else, right? Yeah. <laughs> First, so give me a rating. Give me a rating on the lake. One to ten. One out of ten. Maybe a two and a half, three. So you fished here before, though, right? We did high school fishing. High school for my boys. Yeah, and you still would give it a. Yeah, it's probably a three right now. Three out of ten. Yeah, it's tough. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. Tough, yeah. That's not good. All right, so he's gonna give it. I'll give mine last. Joe gave it a three out of ten. Okay. He said three out of ten. Yeah, that's good. You think so? <laughs> All right, Flint, I'll let you go next. Y'all know Flint. Flint travels with us last year. If you don't know Flint, this is Flint. I don't even believe this like gets a rating. It don't get no rating. Mm -hmm. What does it get? I mean, dude, honestly, 0.5 out of 10. Point five? Point five, dude. Now, you, you, you don't, can't you, be you, a point dude, five, I, Flint. I'm being that way. Because you, you don't just be like, all right, I'm... I got a fun day to go fish. Let me go drive to West Point. Well, if you if you rate a point five and you catch like thirteen pounds or more, then your weights are zeroed. You realize that, right? I'll, then I'll go up. Your weights don't count. The rating can change though. At a point five, you, the most weight you can weigh both days combined. What would you say? What would you say if he, if you give a lake a point five rating? You would have to the right. best you I, can I, get. Sixteen I give it a, pounds. I give it a two. I saw a two. A two. So what would you say then? If you if you rated a two, then I'm gonna say you That's twelve pounds a day. That's not bad. I'll take that. I'll take twelve pounds a day. Oh heck yeah. Twelve pounds a day you're making look. I think you might make top ten with twelve pounds. Uh, you'd a day. you'd have to make the thirty cut right <laughs> oh, with twelve a day. Make the 30 cut. You'd have to, right? Yeah. I mean I don't know. The weights it takes nowadays, you might take seven. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, dude. With the way the weights work now, I don't know I don't like talking about weights anymore. I'm gonna what? give it a one though. A one? Yeah. A one out of ten. One out of ten. You're catching three pounds. Why so why do y'all think it's that bad? Why why it's do you that bad? I'm because it sucks. It's just bad. 
<laughs> because it sucks. <laughs> it, but a lot of places suck. I don't sucks. think it's that they're not biting. I really don't. I think there's just literally not that many bass in here. So yeah, that way, yeah. that's, that's the why you don't catch us, man. There's just yeah, not that many bass. It's probably not. I do get that right. feeling. The weather's right. I do get that feeling that there's not that many fish in here. So, all right. So we and got, everybody's fishing the same stuff. Everyone's, every, just ro there's, everyone's just rotating the same areas. Yeah. I can see that. I can see. I'll give you that. I don't like know. Fishing 12 hours a day, you can barely catch five fish. You can barely catch. That is definitely a true statement. <laughs> 12 hour a day, you can barely get to My five. My weight predictions though, I'm going to say eight and a half pounds a day makes top 50. 16 pounds makes 50. So what do you what do you think is the top 30 cut? Ten and a half a day. So 21 or so, 21, 22. I say that's realistic. I say, well, it, it's hard to say top 10. Yeah. Top 10 after two days, I would say like 12 a day. 12 a day. That's really hard to catch. I uh. Kind of cold. Yeah, it's not warm today. It's not warm today. It's been very, very warm. And then now it's not, it's not cold, but we've been having like 70 degree days. And so now it's, it's maybe, it's maybe, uh, I don't know, 55, cloudy. Um, what would I rate it? I'd rate it, I'd, I got the highest rating of all, I guess just because I don't ever trust, I don't trust not getting bites. I I think I think the best day in practice I had four bites, five bites in the day. When I say the best in the whole day, five bites. I'm gonna give the lake. I'm gonna give it a 5.3. What's that? 5.3. Because there's like a few bites where you see where it could be good, but like Flint was saying, there's just not a lot of bites, and so I could see how you could easily. I can see how you could you could have a good day as easily as you have a bad day. So I'm giving it a five point. Did I say five three? If I didn't say five three, five point three. Yeah, five point three. I think I think that's reasonable. I think five point three because that's bad. Five point three is still bad. It's still it's still not good. You know, <laughs> it's not like it's not like that's a good score or anything. I, I don't. I, you know, I'm not saying that I can kiss it. I'm just saying I. I wouldn't be like, oh my god, I couldn't take, believe it took 15 pounds a day to win. That might be a little high. Let's say 43. What is that? 40. 40, like 40. Rock call like a 9 14 footer on your 7 2 cranking rod? Yeah, 7 2. That's the one I threw it on. Yeah, that's 7 2. Yeah. That 610 is for little plugs and square bills. It's for wood, wood, wood baits, wood baits, uh, wood baits, chair wraps, fritz sides. Yeah, you want that 40 bucks for that fritz side or what? Which one you need? What color you need? Red. Oh, I don't know about that, Flint. I might have to change the prices on red. I don't know about it. You know, I don't like their red. Let's see if I actually have a red one. I don't really care for their red. I don't know why. Let's see. Flint's asking me for a plug. I don't know if I want to give it to him or not. It's like I, I told him I'd give him one on day two. That way I know. Yeah. I probably need that one. Whoa, I guess the only one I got in. A lot of stuff was on back order when I ordered it, so they didn't. So I throw I throw that black and then this one. <laughs> but you said it. He looks at the package. Crank bait, you know. Fritz side seven on it, so. I asked Brian how deep it was. Yeah, how deep it dive? Come on, man. It was a stupid question, but at the same time, there's a bunch of crankbaits that have numbers on it. They do. And That's it's fair. Hard to understand how deep each You're one. You're not is. wrong with that. I give you that much. But this one was kind of obvious. <laughs> he goes. He goes. What? How deep? He said. He literally goes. How deep does a fritz side five dive? I was like, maybe he's just playing. So I just shut up for a minute. And then they just kept talking and talking. I was like, bro, come on, man. You said you you told me you graduated high school. Did you graduate kindergarten? 
That's when you start talking about this generation and then you say something negative. All the while, this generation is a whole lot smarter than we were. I actually, I actually find it very amusing when, when older people talk about this generation being dumb, almost like they raised their selves. You know what I mean? That blows my mind. It's like, you're the parent, dummy. That's literally your son. Yeah. You're responsible for how much that kid knows and you said he's dumb. That means you're dumb. You made the mistake. It, you made the, the jokes on you, buddy. That always blows my mind with, with, uh, with, uh, you know, just people in general. They're like, these kids today, these kids today don't know how to, and then they'll say whatever they know how to do and how their kids don't do it. As if they were gonna just somehow by osmosis, you know, <laughs> just osmosis, just, yeah, just, just take in knowledge. <laughs> that blows my mind. I think day one could be better than you think, and then day two, yeah, day one may be better than you think. You got some weather coming in here. Don't forget, our fish like weather. I say our fish. I feel like I'm still in my area, even though I haven't fished here before. But they like weather. I know it may not seem like it being from Florida, but it's actually a warm rain. Trust me with that. 50 degree rain is actually like a fairly warm. That's not a cold rain. Because it, it, it could be, this time of year, it could be like, it could easily be 35. 38 42 and raining you yeah, know came this time yeah so a uh, uh, mid to upper 50 rain is our spring rain so they probably uh, just wouldn't be surprised if you know you see a couple decent bags tomorrow these skirts a buddy makes for me I always end up taking the z-man skirt off of my spinner base and using this color my buddy uses it makes for me he's been good to me over the years jeff if you're watching this video i appreciate you making me these little silicone skirts for me um for me the the spinner bait out of the package for especially for muddy water like where we're fishing doesn't really have i i think i think it needs a little bit more skirt material the traditional like the regular z-man skirt it's fine for clear water but like when you start getting in muddier situations like what we got here i feel like it needs uh i feel like it needs a little bit more <clears throat> ah, booty to it need more 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 you know you don't have that yoga pants look to it you know so he makes me these skirts they're always unique colors and i say it's unique it's not of course you've seen plenty of white and chartreuse spinnerbait skirts but it's just got a little bit more, like the white is not white. The white is like whitish. Let's put some other colors in it. Nothing else that makes me more happy. I threw this one in practice, but I'm gonna, this is a skirt that kind of, if you're catching fish on a spinnerbait though, the skirt will look a little like that. You see how it looks like Fido, it needs a haircut. Looks in, looking kind of rough, right? We can fix that. We're about to do this spinner bait makeover. It's just like a, like a, what's a beauty channel? I don't, I don't get to watch TV anymore. You know where they have those makeovers where they take somebody's looking pretty, pretty ugly. <laughs> they make them not look ugly. Just take them. Take the old skirt off, cutting ball. Oh, this is like men. You know how men, they're giving men like those, uh, like when you go bald headed, they're giving you those glue-ons. This is like a glue-on. This glue-on wig type things. I think I'm just gonna let it go when I, when I go completely bald. I'm getting there. I probably got, I think my hairline's got a, a good five more years. <laughs> I think I got, <laughs> I think I got five more years in my hairline before she is expired. <laughs> Ain't gonna be no more. I think I got five more years. Depending on how rough life gets in between now, now and the next five years. 
But she held in there a long time. She gave me a good 40 plus, so I can't even be mad. <laughs> you know, she gave me, she gave me, she gave me all she got. I can't even be upset at her. By far, my favorite spinnerbait trailer. On right there. Swimming trout trick. This is not even a, that's not even a, it's a saltwater bait. Oh, wow. I use this to catch redfish and trout with. But it doubles as probably the best, in my opinion, my favorite um, spinnerbait trailer. You see, it's, it's thinner, so it lets your bait kind of get down. I know somebody's going to say, where are you throwing purple with chartreuse? Shut up, Jerry. I do stuff. This is how I operate. I love to mismatch my plastics and trailers and stuff just because, I don't know, I just do that a lot. I think water's so muddy, it probably don't matter. Even if it does matter. I always say color matters. Color doesn't matter until it matters. When it matters, it matters, but most of the time, most of the time it don't matter. I might could, let me see. I could trim a little bit of that. I usually don't trim my trailers that much. Probably could have put the whole thing on there, to be honest with you. I'm gonna try. I got another pack. All that same color. Any other colors in here? It's amazing how these plastics are in a Ziploc bag. Yet they, when I left this bag, that box out because it rained and I just didn't, it was just too hard to try to put it in the box and somehow water gets in the bag. Like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? I probably could have used just a whole one. That's the way I should have done it. One thing I think I don't talk about enough is, um, you know, I do mention it. I feel like I'm probably a lot more thankful to be doing this than a lot of, at least than a lot of people express. Um, it feels good to just pull up to the gas pump, pump gas in your boat and not worry about if, how much money you got in the bank. That's where I came from. And so, I come from that. A lot of people don't believe me when I, I've told stories before of uh, rolling quarters to pay BFL entry fees. So I'd have money to put in the bank to call 1-270-252-1000. I've been dialing that number to, what is it, Gamble, Kentucky for 20 plus years now. So it's kind of weird. I still feel young, but I'm not young anymore. Like the guys that I'm staying with, they're the young ones now. And I always tell them, I'm like, man, y'all don't realize they're so much further ahead than I was at that age. When I was 22, 23 years old, I'd say I was probably a decent fisherman for the time. You know, considering the information and considering how many 22, 23 year olds were fishing at that time. But I look at Flint, I look at Christian and some of the other people around, the Robinson kids. Man, they're so freaking good. I don't think y'all yet realize how good some of these kids are. And, but you're gonna find out very soon that this new generation of anglers. I even did a TV show last year fishing with some kids. And uh, you know, that's the first thing everybody says is when we talk about the new generation of fishermen, the first thing they want to rattle off as well is because of the electronics, because of the electronics, because of the electronics. That's not it, man. I did a, I did a TV show with a couple kids that I, that I consider taking under my wing. I don't, I don't really even like to say that because that kind of suggests that I know more than they do when they really know just as much as I do. And um, 
We took the electronics away. I had a four boat tournament. You can go see it. So I'm, my TV show comes on Waypoint TV every Saturday morning at 1030. But you should go watch that and see how those kids perform. We took away no electronics. Now I tell people that all the time. I don't think they believe me, but the electronics is only doing so much. It does help. I do believe the weights are a little bit different than they used to be a lot because of electronics, but man, the kids are better now. They know more, they're more dedicated. I think parents have come around to it as well. That helps when you got more dedicated parents to the sports. Uh, I think that also, I think that also goes, you know, that, that does something, that means something. So I think the future is bright for fishing. It's very, very bright. Not only are the anglers better, but I can't wait to see what the generation is going to do that becomes the owner of bait companies and the owner that wants the kids that watch YouTube now. So basically like Bill Dance's era, it, Jimmy Houston era, Hank Parker era is what's in control of the fishing industry now. That's your CEOs of Berkeley, of Z-Man, of you know, whatever the big company that you think of, the Bill Dance era influence what you see now. What you're, what you're about to see is the influence of the YouTube era. The John B's, the Millican fishing, all of these fishing YouTube influencers, which is the same as the TV back in the day, that's what's about to take over tournament fishing now. So you're going to see a different spin. I always relate fishing back to music. Fishing is like music because no matter how you play it, what you like, the notes are still the same notes. The same notes that are in country music and bluegrass are the same notes that you play in hip hop, same notes that you play in jazz, but they put them together different to get a different sound. And you're seeing that now. We're even still using some of the same baits that Bill Dance talked about, but the younger generation today are using them a different way, and it's making a different sound. So I think it's really cool. Future's bright, man. You're going to see a lot of really cool stuff in fishing in the next couple of years. Ain't that right, Flint? <laughs>